Hello and welcome to Economic Observations. My name is Chris and today is April 11th, 2023. And I am delighted that you can join me for my comeback video. It has been a whopping six months since my last video. And it's not that I haven't tried doing the videos. It's just I was never satisfied with the end result. Thus, having never uploaded them, but I have about eight all edited and then I just decided not to upload them. But thank you to the people who sent me lovely messages wanting me to come back and asking me how I was. I really appreciate it. Maybe that's exactly what I needed just to make this video. Well, folks, in this video, I have some big news to share at the end and I have some economic talk about retail. We're going to talk about retail. As many of you know, I sell Tanzanian art and this video is sponsored by the Tanzania School Foundation. There are links in the description should you want to help support it. Anyway, it was Christmas time and I set up for an eight week holiday market that I was anticipating raising enough money through the sale of art to support the school for the next four months, right? Because in January, February, and March, even April, we don't have a lot going on. So it's a slow winter. Even though it's been a mild winter in Massachusetts, it was a slow winter. Well, I'll tell you, this Christmas market was equally slow. The money we paid versus the cost of the gas and the time that we spent, along with the cost of the product, we just broke even. So there was no revenue to carry us over through the winter months, which is really difficult because the school year starts in January and that's when we have to spend a lot of money getting it all together. We just didn't have it this year. But all hope was not lost. There was a dental conference coming to Boston and I thought, wow, 17,000 dentists and hygienists we will make some money at this event. It was a three-day event. It cost a lot of money in exhibitor fees to be there, and it was a total bust. We lost $1,500 doing that three-day event. The heck with the gas and the car and all our time. That was an outright loss. Retail is dead. It's not like it was in 2021 when people were at home and they were still spending money. Now, Everyone is out and about. I just went to Tanzania last month. It was kind of like a, if I don't go now, I don't know when I'll go back and I'll get to that in a little while. So I went usually in March when I go to Tanzania, that flight from Boston to Amsterdam is empty. There was not an empty seat on the plane. And then from Amsterdam to Tanzania, not an empty seat on the plane. In March, it's considered low season. The rainy season is just around the corner. And I could not believe how crowded the planes were. Just packed. Same with the return flights. Not an empty seat on the plane. So that tells me that people are not spending money on stuff anymore. But people are traveling and people are staying at hotels and people are living life after not living it for a couple of years. So that is my economic assumption. I know there's so much more to talk about from rising interest rates to the price of housing and maybe going into a deflationary period. Just people aren't buying stuff and there's a lot of stuff in inventory. And when stores can't sell stuff, they start lowering their prices. And that's why I think we might be going into a slight deflationary period. I know the Tanzania School Foundation has so much inventory. I don't know what to do with it, but May is coming and that's when all the markets begin. But something serendipitous happened. So after that defeated dental conference that I was at, I was bummed out. I felt defeated, kicked and broken. And then I went and talked to somebody. And it was like a money manager kind of guy. And I was talking about my 401k and what, you know, where should, what kind of investments I should go into. Jerome Powell's increasing those interest rates. And I thought maybe, you know, a long-term annuity can help us out or help me out. Um, and I don't have the time span of 30 years before I start dipping into my 401k. So I wanted to 
heed or take advantage of the higher interest rates. You know, some people don't like the higher interest rates because of debt and they need to borrow. Anyway, we got into talking. I said, Goldman Sachs just laid up 3,500 people. What's going on at your firm? Blah, 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 blah. Anyway, lo and behold, he says, matter of fact, we're hiring. He says, you should go onto our company webpage and see if there's any jobs that interest you. Well, I got home, I went on my little laptop and there was a job that was a perfect match for what I felt that I, that I did at Goldman Sachs for so many years, only it was a new product and it's a startup. And I was kind of excited about it. So I applied for it, not thinking anything of it, right? We all apply for jobs and I get, you know, over the years rejected, rejected. And I really wasn't looking for a job, but I set my resume out. And two days later, I got an email saying the hiring manager is very interested. He wants to meet with you. So two days later, I had an interview with two people. And then two days later, I had another interview with two more people outside of the Boston area. And two days after that, they offered me the job and I started last month and I'm really excited about it. So it is a basically remote position. We do have to go into the office for, you know, for meetings and to meet people and to kind of network um, a few days a month. Um, but for the most part, I'm home and I'm really excited about it and I'm learning a lot and I'm trying to figure out what actually my role is. But it's in the crypto space and it's new and it's exciting and there's a lot of young people and a lot of people with brilliant ideas and we're all kind of coming together to see what can work and make this happen. So yeah, I got a full-time job. It's a great job. After not being in the workforce for 12 years, I now have two two jobs, really. I mean, I was in the workforce doing the Tanzania School Foundation, but that never paid me. So now I have a job where I'm getting paid and I have the Tanzania School Foundation, which I think once I get my settled in this new job, I think it can actually help the Tanzania School Foundation in the long run. So there's a link below for GoFundMe. I would really, really appreciate it if you can donate something. We have some pressing um, bills that we have to pay, some school fees for some kids, and we really need your help. And in the meantime, I'm going to just keep my, um, my focus on my full-time job with my right hand and with my left hand. I'm going to work with the Tanzania School Foundation burning the midnight oil, and my promise to you is to do one video a week. I know it's not a lot when people do these economic videos. They tend to do them daily. I'm going to commit to one day a week for now to see how it goes. And I hope that you will watch them. Another update, the girl Melissa that I helped back in October 2021. She was the drug addict that I found on the street. She graduated from her program in Reno, Nevada. She was there for 15 months. She's now clean for 16 months. She moved to Minnesota to be with her son, and I really hope and pray that Melissa continues her journey of good health and being the young woman that she was made to be. Anyway, that's all I got for you tonight. It's just my welcome back video. Anyway, be kind. Call someone. Tell them you love them. I'll talk to you again real soon, and have a wonderful night.